Hello again, my friends. I'm happy to bring you another Silver Senior Silver Screen special biography on an old classic Hollywood movie, Gone with the Wind. But before we get started, please kindly take a moment right now and click that subscribe button and notification bell so you can be alerted of every time I upload a new video. This video is dedicated to Margaret Kerr, who's one of my YouTube channel subscribers. She had commented that she'd like to see one of my bios of this movie. So thank you so much, Margaret. I hope this video does your movie justice. Hi, I'm Lucy, and this is Pancake. Thank you for joining us for another video, and if this is your first time here, a very warm welcome to you. And so if you'd like me to do a bio on one of your favorite movies and also have me dedicate a movie in your name that will be mentioned here in one of my future videos, please let me know by commenting below. I have gotten some other requests to do some other movies and I will be doing them in the order in which I receive them. I don't want anyone to think I've forgotten them. It just takes me some time to do the research on each movie and then put it all together for you. I get so bored I can scream. And just in case some of you haven't seen this movie, please know there will be some spoilers in the video. Also, please watch this video to the end to see some really cool behind the scenes photos, some that you might not have seen before. And I'm also including some interesting facts and trivia too. So you are no gentleman. And you, miss, are no lady. And please kindly check out my playlist of preview movies right here on my channel to see other videos I've created of other movies similar to this one. Don't you want to marry me? And so without further ado, through the magic of my computer, I have colorized some of the old black and white pictures from the scenes, from some of the scenes rather, which I find that you can see more details in them. I'm going to marry Melanie. By the way, while I'm on the subject, just to let some of you know that may be interested to know, sadly my computer is old, just like me. So that means the colors on some of the pictures might not be perfect. Also, I'm not a professional artist. I'm doing these videos for free and as a hobby. But you can't! None of you care for me! But if you'd like to contribute towards the purchase of a new computer, please feel free to donate in any amount into my PayPal account. The link to it is down below under this video in the description area. Thank you in advance. And, I can't think of anything bad enough. and just a side note before I get into the, some of the background of this movie. So far, this has been the video that has taken me the longest to create. He's a soldier in the South who loves you, Scarlet. It took me a few days to complete. I wasn't aware that there was so much research to do on this movie. And then after I started, I was debating whether or not I should do this video because of all the controversy around it. I must have your arms around it. I must have carry the memory of your kisses in the battle with it. Kiss me. Kiss me. I had no idea just how much controversy this movie had until I started researching it to do this video. So I was hesitant and probably would not have done it, especially because it took me a really long time to bring it all together. But like I mentioned earlier, even though I was a little bit reluctant, I did it more for my subscriber that requested it. If not, I honestly would not have done it. So with that being said, please don't shoot the messenger. I'm just here to bring you the entertainment part of this movie. That's it and that's all. If you don't care for this movie because of its background, I ask that you please client kindly just don't watch it. That way it won't hurt my new little channel here that I'm working so hard to grow on. Speaking of which, for those that don't know, I am a disabled senior citizen and I do these videos for free as a gift to you and to hopefully earn sometime in the near future a little extra from youtube because they pay very little the little bit that they do pay if and when my channel ever gets monetized which probably won't be for a long time because like i said i'm just beginning meanwhile i'm not making any money off of these videos 
And the reason I wanted to mention that is because someone unfortunately left me a negative comment, which I really didn't care for. I didn't, I didn't appreciate that. Um, I know you can't satisfy everyone and there are all kinds of people in this world, but there's no need for it and it was unnecessary. And they were stating that one of my pictures was not colorized basically to their satisfaction. Well, all I can say is like I mentioned previously, my computer is old and disabled just like me. So you're more than welcome to make a donation that'll go towards the purchase of a new computer and hopefully that'll resolve the pro the problem and maybe make you happy and like uh, some of my pictures more. Um, but sorry about that. Um, but meanwhile, any negative comments, just to let you know, I won't publish them. They'll just be deleted. Folks, I'm just here to share one of my hobbies with like-minded people. So let's try to uh, just spread some, some joy, basically, really. I mean, isn't there enough ugliness in this world already? Let's not add any more to it. Thank you for your understanding. So to continue about this movie, it's considered a drama, romance, and war movie. It was released in the USA in 1940, and it stars Clark Gable, Vivian Lee, Leslie Howard, and Olivia de Havilland. And some of the co-stars were Thomas Mitchell, Barbara O'Neill, Evelyn Keyes, Anne Rutherford, George Reeves, Fred Crane, Hattie McDonald, McDaniel, excuse me, Oscar Polk, Butterfly McQueen, Victor Jory, Everett Brown, Howard Hickman, Alicia Rett, Rand Brooks, and others. Some parts of it were filmed in North Little Rock, Arkansas. It was directed by Victor Fleming. The screenplay was written by Sidney Howard and produced by MGM, and it won a whopping eight Oscars. The movie is about the manipulative daughter of a Georgia plantation owner conducts a turbulent romance with a roguish profiteer during the American Civil War and Reconstruction periods. And now I've got some juicy trivia tidbits for you. One month after the book was published, David O. Selznick purchased the movie rights from Margaret Mitchell for an unprecedented $50,000. At the time, it was the highest sum that had ever been paid for an author's first novel. Realizing he had underpaid Mitchell, Selznick gave her an additional $50,000 as a bonus when he dissolved Selznick International Pictures in 1942. The character of Ashley Wilkes was based on Margaret Mitchell's cousin by marriage, John Doc Holliday. Melanie was based on Mitchell's third cousin and Doc's first cousin and close friend, Maddie's sister, Melanie Holliday. Doc moved west and became the gambler and gunfighter of Gunfight at the OK Corral fame. Maddie joined a convent and became a nun but maintained a correspondence with Doc, who died of tuberculosis in 1887, 13 years before Margaret Mitchell was born. And according to newsreels, there were a handful of Confederate Civil War veterans who, though quite old, attended the premiere of this movie in Atlanta. And Vivian Lee worked for 125 days and received about $25,000. Clark Gable worked for 71 days and received over $120,000. And Hattie McDaniel met with David Selznick in full costume in a successful effort to beat her main rival, Louise Beavers, to the part. Hattie McDaniel was criticized by some African Americans for playing in a supposedly racist film. She responded that she would, and I quote, rather make $700 a week playing a maid than $7 being one. 
unquote. And the fact that Hattie McDaniel will be unable to attend the premiere in racially segregated Atlanta outraged Clark Gable so much that he threatened to boycott the premiere unless she could attend. He later relented when she convinced him to go. Hattie McDaniel became the first African-American person to be nominated for and win an Academy Award. And Olivia de Havilland always meticulously researched her roles. As she had not yet had a baby in real life, she visited a maternity hospital to study how various women coped with the stresses of childbirth for the scene where Melanie has her baby. Off camera, the scene's director, George Kukar, would occasionally pinch her toes to make her feel pain. Wow. Okay. Vivian Lee later said that she hated kissing Clark Gable because of his bad breath, rumored to be caused by his false teeth. According to Frank Buckingham, a technician who observed the film being made, Gable would sometimes eat garlic before his kissing scenes with Vivian Lee. Wow. <laughs> Okay, Vivian Lee was not happy with Victor, Fle Victor Fleming's brusque style after the careful nurturing she had enjoyed with George Kukar. When she asked him for direction in one scene, he told her, ham it up. On another occasion, when she asked for his constructive advice, he told her to, and I quote, take the script and stick it up her royal British ass. Unquote. After Kukor's departure, Lee had to fight hard to keep the movie Scarlet true to her view. Fleming's interpretation of her was that she was an out-and-out -out bitch as in the novel and that he had no desire to create any sympathy or insight for her. Yikes. And Leslie Howard privately felt that he was much too old to play Ashley Wilkes. The character was supposed to be about 21 at the start of the film. He wore extra makeup and even a hairpiece to make him appear younger. And very few of the principal cast members liked the characters they were portraying. Like Clark Gable, for example, was induced into accepting his role through arrangements to divorce his current wife and marry Carol Lombard. Rand Brooks, who played Scarlett's first husband, Charles Hamilton, was actually a rough outdoorsman who objected to playing a wimpy character. Butterfly McQueen disliked the negative stereotype of her character. Leslie Howard felt he was too old for the role of Ashley Wilkes and complained that his costumes made him look like a fairy doorman at a hotel. And the only four actors David Selznick ever seriously considered for the role of Red Butler were Clark Gable, Gary Cooper, Errol Flynn, and Ronald Coleman. The chief impediment to Gable's casting was his MGM contract. He was not drawn to the material. He didn't see himself in a period production and didn't believe that he could live up to the public's anticipation of the character. Eventually, he was persuaded by a $50,000 bonus which would enable him to marry his second wife, Maria, or rather divorce his second wife, Maria, and marry Carol Lombard. When Gary Cooper turned down the role of Red Butler, he was passionately about against it. He is quoted as saying, Gone with the Wind is going to be the biggest flop in Hollywood's history, and I'm just glad it'll be Clark Gable who's falling on his face and not Gary Cooper. And Barbara O'Neill was only 28 when she appeared as Ellen O'Hara, Scarlett's mother, 
and Vivian Lee was 25 when she appeared as Scarlett, who she was portraying an only 16-year-old at the beginning of the film. And unlike the innocent character of Melanie Hamilton, Olivia de Havilland was known to have a wicked sense of humor. For example, during a take of Rep Butler having to carry Melanie to the carriage to leave Atlanta during its siege, de Havilland had her body fastened to the set. So Clark Gable almost threw his back out trying to lift her. And Mark Steiner was given only three months to compose the music considering that 1939 was the busiest year of his career. And that year he wrote the music for 12 films. In order to meet the deadline, Steiner sometimes worked for 20 hours straight and took benzodrine or drying dream pills to stay awake. With almost three hours of music, Gone with the Wind had the longest film score ever composed up to that time. The first scene to be shot was the burning of the Atlanta Depot, filmed on December 10th of 1938. If there was a major mistake during the filming, the entire film might have been scrapped. They actually burned many old sets that needed to be cleared from the studio backlot including ones from the Garden of Allah in 1936 and the Grey Wall set from King Kong made in 1933. The fire cost over $25,000 and yielded 113 minutes of footage. It was so intense that Culver City residents jammed the telephone lines thinking MGM was burning down. Scarlett was stunt doubled by Aline Goodwin and Lila Finn, while Rhett was doubled by veteran stuntmen Yakima Kanat and Jay Wilsey. Reportedly, one of the reasons stated by David Selznick as to why he fired George Kukar as director was that Kukar, a homosexual, would be unable to properly direct the love scenes between Rhett and Scarlett. Hence, he was replaced by macho director Victor Fleming. Although he was dismissed from the production, Kukor continued to privately coach both Vivian Lee and Olivia de Havilland at their request on weekends, unbeknownst to both Selznick and Fleming. And the horse that Thomas Mitchell rode was Silver of the Lone Ranger Rides Again, made in 1939. The horse's real name was Silver Chief. This is not the same horse that Clayton Moore rode on the Lone Ranger in 1949, as many want to believe. We've got a lot more, hotter than your morning coffee. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, I would greatly appreciate it if you would please kindly give me a like, comment below, share with others, subscribe to my channel, and click the notification bell to be alerted of every time I upload a new video. Please come back to see the next one. Until then, bye for now and be blessed.